Father, as we share your word this morning, we ask that your written word through my mouth, Lord, you'll make it the Rema word for every listener this morning. We honor you, we exalt you above everything else. We declare that you are our God. We love you. And our desire is to please you all the days of our lives. Therefore, Father, for the moments that we are sitting down to hear your word, I pray that every reason now you hear your word and we'll be glad that they came to your house this morning. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's appreciate the worship team even as they sit down. Appreciate yourself for being in the house of God. Celebrate Jesus who has caused you to be in the house this morning. We can have our seats. It's good to be in the house of the Lord on this African Sunday. And I guess uh, an African Sunday is one of the days where we do great many things by faith. You know, I would see people dancing with a lot of, you know, and you know some of us, we actually don't know what we were saying. But by faith, we knew we were saying good things and we were excited. So I guess an African Sunday, maybe it's your turn to sing by faith, especially if you don't understand what you are singing. It's all good by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Because I know in heaven there will be no confusion. We will understand one another. Amen. Happy New Year. Look at your neighbor, say Happy New Year. You know it's not a guarantee that you have seen them this year. Tell the one on your right, the one on your left, Happy New Year. Tell them, I am so glad that death never caught up with you. That is why you have a neighbor in church this morning. You know why? His goodness keeps chasing us. Goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. And I can see the goodness of the Lord has followed you. That's why you are in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. I'm so glad to be here. I am an evidence that God is good. Because I was there yesterday, I learned a new terminology. That I was there BC, before Corona. I was there during Corona and I'm still there because of the grace of God. And I can see you are the same. That we were there, we are here and we are here to stay until the Lord calls us home. So I'm so glad that uh, he preserved you and me. And this one is a confirmation. There is some unfinished assignment for you and me. The fact that you are seated here this morning or you are listening from wherever is a confirmation that God has got something for you to do. And I'm so glad that I'm talking to you in the month of January. I know there's a lot that is happening. We are making big plans because we have been taught by the word of God that opportunities favor the prepared. And therefore, I know you are making good plans. Last year, by the grace of God, my, my family decided to organize for me a birthday. And it was a very nice birthday. It felt, it made me feel so youthful. There were balloons. You know those birthdays which we make for children? There were balloons. There was a cake. They had written things on the wall. But one of the things that caught my attention was the balloons that were there. During the time when I used to make birthdays for my children, I guess those balloons were not there, and if they were, I didn't know they were. Those balloons, they were pumping a certain kind of air. I don't know what is the name. I've forgotten. I was told, but I've forgotten. And you don't have to tie them on the wall. Once you pump that, that air, as long as you are in a tent or you are in a room, they would just go the, where you want them to stop. So my grandchildren used to, uh, really enjoyed moving them from one area because they had tied some things and they could reach. They would move them, we would move with them outside. So it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed. And I wondered, this special kind of air that was pumped into the balloons made the balloons stick where they have been put. And this air 
we have been told it is the year of mounting up. There must be something that will cause you to go against the power of gravity that you are mounting up and you are remaining up and soaring high and high. Are we together? Up to there. And I know all of us, we have our own plans. And uh, I know you are like me. Sometimes they, I know here there is a representation of many abandoned plans. You started strong at some point. You don't know at what point you stopped, but truth be told, it is told. But in this year of mounting up, we want some plans that will push us up, sustain us there, maintain us there, that even the storms that will come our way will only hold us there. They also say that there are only two ways to do things, for doing things. There are only two ways. The two ways are you do it right. And number two, if you don't do it right, you will do it again. Because you will have to correct, therefore you will have to redo, you will have to repair, or you will have to repeat. The second way of doing things, which is the one of repeating, repairing, and, um, and even sometimes bringing it down, it's usually very frustrating and very expensive. Therefore, if you can be able to do it right the very first time, it will help you achieve your goal very fast. And therefore, this morning, very quickly, I'd want us to share a few thoughts or a few mistakes we can avoid, which will sustain our plans there, so that as we start soaring high, as we start mounting up, we will be able to be sustained there because we avoided. Sometimes in the month of December, those of us who are here, there, there was a certain apostle who visited us from South Africa. And in one of the services, he talked about foundations. One thing I still remember he said was, a foundation is very key. You cannot afford to compromise a foundation. Because once it is done, if like now they thought the foundation of this house is faulty, it would be almost impossible, if not very expensive, to repair it. Because sometimes it will mean we bring down the beast, the, 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 all the walls and the roof for us to repair. Therefore, if you can do it right, you are a blessed man. You are a blessed brother. Therefore, I would want us, and the Bible is very good and candid on how we can make plans. I would want us to, uh, you to project for us Proverbs 16, verse 1 to 3 in the message version. Proverbs 16, verse 1 to 3. We're in the season of making plans. And we don't want just to make plans. We want plans that will cause us to mount up. Only the people who will have the, the godly plans will be able to mount up. You make ungodly plans, you'll keep coming down. And this is what the Bible has to say. Mortals make elaborate plans, but God has the last word. Humans are satisfied with whatever looks good. God probes for what is good. I want you to note that. That you and me, sometimes we, just, we are just satisfied with whatever looks good. Maybe you want to do like what you saw so and so doing. It, because it looks good. Verse 3. Put God in charge of your work. Then what you have planned will take place. And I want to ask you this morning, who is in charge of your plans? Have you put God in charge of all the plans, of all the goals, the things you have planned for 2021? I want to ask you, I want you to ask yourself, who is in charge? Who has come up with the idea? Is it what you just thought was right? And this leads me to what I, I want us to discuss this morning. James chapter 4, verse 13 to 17 in message version. 
And now I have a word for you who brushly announce today at the latest. Tomorrow we are off to such and such a city for the year. We are going to start a business and make a lot of money. You don't know the first thing about tomorrow. You are nothing but a wisp of fog catching a brief bit of sun before disappearing. Instead, make it a habit to say, if the master wills, if the master wills it and we are still alive, we will do this and that. As it is, you are full of grandiose selves. All such vaunting self-importance is evil. Verse 17. In fact, if you know the right thing to do and you don't do it, and you don't do it, that for you is evil. Project for us where we started, verse 13. Verse 13, I would want us to see from verse 13, mistake number one, which you must avoid if your plans will uphold you and you remain mounting up. Because you can get started and you stall somewhere. But if you avoid, I want to talk about three mistakes you can avoid. And if you avoid the three mistakes, you can be sure your plans will start the test of time. Mistake number one, planning without involving God. Planning without involving God. In verse number 14, verse 13, sorry. Let's start from verse 13. And now I have a word for you who brushly announce. I don't know whether you are part of that one. Today at the latest. Tomorrow we are off to such and such a city for the year. We are going to start a business and make a lot of money. Hold it there. They teach us about smart goals. Smart goals. To me, I see a very smart goal there. Very smart. Why do I call it smart? Because we can see the person knows what she wants or he wants. He wants to do a business. He even knows where at a certain city. The person knows there are some people. At least he's talking in plural. We are going. We are going to start a business. Maybe it's a partnership. So, to me, so far, very good plan. Very good, very smart, very smart. And finally, the goal of the business is to make profit. A very good plan. But there is one mistake. In that plan, God is not mentioned anywhere. A great plan, but in all the plan, God is not mentioned. And I want to ask you, I know you have got great plans for 2021. Is God mentioned anywhere? Was God part of it? Or you just looked around and you thought, yes, so and so is doing such and such a thing. I can also do it. Did you inquire from the Lord? Was God part of the planning? And this morning, I want to encourage you. I want us to run together from the word of God. If you want your plans to start the test of time, Pray and involve God in your plans. Thank God we are still in January. Therefore, even if we will re repeat the plans or audit, edit the plans, we have not gone so far. It is godly to go back and ask God, God, are you in this? Or is it... Like the, we have led. Was it just you? You are so proud. You know. And the word of God is not very kind. It's saying you don't even know the first thing tomorrow. You have no idea. And the way you are talking with a lot of self-confidence. How I pray that you will talk with God confidence. When you have got conf God confidence. Even when there are challenges you will know. 
at least God was in this one. God gave me a breakthrough. God is in it. Did you know as long as God is inside, you can never sink? Have you ever seen a balloon which is under the water? A balloon. Unless you pierce it and it releases the air, it can never go under the water. It is always floating. You want your plants to float? You want, because... You are who you are because of what you do. That is what will cause you to mount up. And for sure, we will mount up. But only those who have involved God in their plans will be able to mount up. So, if you can avoid mistake number one, making big plans, big profit, you know, you even know, I want to start a branch in Kisumu, another one in Mombasa, another one in Meru, and another one in Yahururu. You know all that. Why? A lot of profit. There is a lot of demand. But is God in it? If God is not in it, it may, it may become one of the many abandoned plans. We need God's blessing in our plans. Therefore, involve him in your planning. If you leave him out, you may not be able to ask him for his blessings and promises. And sorry, it's so sad to say this, that some of us can even dare make plans which you know they are against the word of God. When you involve God in it, he will tell you this one, it is within these boundaries. So as you call God in whatever you are doing, you can involve him, he will defend it because he was part of it. Make God a partner in whatever you are planning in 2021. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6 to 8. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6 to 8. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, he's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it or run to God, learn from evil. Your body will glow with health. Your very bones will vibrate with life. We all know when you have got plants and they come crabbing down, it affects even your body. But let me tell you, you involve God in what you are doing. You will be, even look healthy because God will keep you on track. We want to remain on track in 2021. We are mounting up and indeed we are going to mount up. But only thought those people who are waiting upon God. Verse 9 says of Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 9. Honor God with everything you own. Give him the first and the best. Amen. In other words, in all that you are going to do in 2021, God will remain the first. You will give him the first and the best. In other words, God is so much positioned that you, have, you know for sure you will withstand. In James chapter 1 verse 5, it talks about at, if you need wisdom, ask of the Lord. And it is in involving God that he will give you wisdom. And the Bible says that God's word makes us wiser than our enemies. And I want to dare say that God's wisdom will make you better than your competitors. That you have, you'll be saying the same things. But because God is part of that one, you will still be the preferred choice. Because God is a partner. I pray that shall be your portion. That in everything you do, God will be part of it. Because he'll give you the wisdom. You will remain a fruit in 2021. Therefore, as we are, we are learning some mistakes to avoid in making the plans. I know maybe some of us, we have already finished. But we keep ed editing because of others. They are unexpected. We keep editing. I pray one of the major additions you can make is to tell God, by the way, God, are you in this? And if you are not, I am willing to surrender. To keep it down, show me how to go about this. Mistake number two, the one you can avoid 
for you to keep mounting up. Otherwise, if you don't, they will keep pulling you down. These mistakes will keep pulling you down. Mistake number two, presuming we shall have tomorrow. Verse 14, maybe you can project it for us again. James. You presume. You don't know the first thing about tomorrow. You are nothing but a wisp of fog catching a brief bit of sun before disappearing. Verse 15. Instead, the Bible discourages you for, you know, speaking with a lot of confidence as if you are in charge of tomorrow. Did you know that you are only assured of now? We live, let us live like it is only one breath away to eternity. Your life can come to an end any time. God decided to keep that a secret. Therefore, as we talk, the Bible is toning us down. It is toning you down. And it says, instead, make it a habit. Tell your neighbor, make it a habit. Tell the one on the right, the one on the left, come on, let's speak in the house of God. Tell them, speak, it's okay, as long as you are, your mask is on. You can talk to them. Instead, make it a habit to say, if the master wills, wills it, and we are still alive. We will do this or that. Simple instructions. I know we have got plans for tomorrow. And it is good to have a plan for tomorrow. But remember. A disclaimer. Make it a habit. That it is, is, if God wills. We will do it. Remember. We are talking. We are reading the word of God. The changeless word. But the word that changes things. Changeless word that changes things. Take it very seriously. I remember the bishop speaking last Sunday and reminding us to respect, to honor the word of God. And this is what the word of God is telling us this morning. Make it a habit to say, if the master wills and we are still alive, we will do this or that. I guess you are the one who is supposed to fill in the, the whatever you are planning to do tomorrow. So, presuming we shall have tomorrow. It is not a guarantee that you will have tomorrow. Remember that the future is uncertain and unpredictable. It amazed me. If the, 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 the word life, we are talking about life, that you are not guaranteed of life tomorrow. The word life, we spell it L-I-F-E. True or true? Okay. The two vowels, vowel, the two letters in the word life, which are they? Eh? If. Did you know that there's a big if in your life? Life. I'm saying life. If I was a teacher and I had a blackboard, I would be writing the, the, the name life. Then I remove the, the last letter, the first and the last. You will have a big if. It is if you'll be there. There is a big if in each one of us life. A big if at the center of your life. Many things are uncertain in this life apart from the following. Very many things they are uncertain apart from the following. Truth of the word of God. That one is certain. Changeless word that changes our lives. Know it and hold on to it. Something else that you can be certain about because you are not certain about tomorrow. You can be so certain about the consistency of God's love. God is good all the time. And I like it. I went somewhere and they were saying, God is good all the time. People are good sometimes. But you can be certain of this thing, that God is good all the time. Consistency of God's love. 
Something else that is certain, dependability of God's goodness. His goodness lands after us, follows us. There is no day you will ever wake up and find that today, oh my goodness, today we don't have the goodness of God. Have you ever gone to a kiosk or a shop and every, all they are selling is hakuna? Uko na maziwa hakuna. Na majani hakuna. I have got good news for the people in the house this morning. There is no day you'll find yourself alive and find that there is no goodness of God. You can depend on the goodness of God. Dependability of God's goodness will cause you make plans, pray about them, and believe God that if, if he wills and you are still living, his goodness will keep you afloat. And number four, reliability of God's promises. You can be certain that his promises are yea and amen. Psalms 91 verse 4b says that the promises of the Lord are our armor. You can rely on God's promises. Remember, life is a test and a temporary assignment. And like we have read in the book of James, like a fog, we are one heartbeat away from eternity. So what do we do if we are living in such uncertain times? What can we do? A few suggestions of what you can do in spite of the big if at the center of your life. The Bible tells us in Matthew 6, 34, that Enough trouble is enough for them. Stop borrowing tomorrow's trouble and bring it to today. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. You are not assured of tomorrow. Stop borrowing from tomorrow. We are so good at that. But from today, tell your neighbor, stop borrowing trouble from tomorrow. You already have enough for today. Proverbs 27 verse 1. In the message version. Proverbs 27 verse, verse 1 says. Don't brushly announce what you are going to do tomorrow. You don't know the first thing about tomorrow. It's a rebuke. Don't brushly announce what you are going to do. You should talk about it with humility because you are depending on God. If he wills and he gives me tomorrow, yes, I will do this and that. And God loves it. You know why? You are not talking about self-confidence. You are depending on him. And God would love that we depend on him and not on ourselves. Finally, mistake number three to avoid. Mistake number three. Putting off, doing what is right and good now. Verse 17, maybe you can project it for us. James chapter 4 verse 17. In fact, if you know the right thing to do and don't do it, that for you is evil. In other words, we are talking about procrastination. Postponing doing what is good. You know it is good. God has already told you to do it. But you have decided I'm not doing it. I will do it at my own time. The Bible is so clear that to you that is evil. Postponing what you know is good. And it is within your powers to do it. That is the sin of doing nothing. In other words, the sin of of procrastination. And I want to ask you this morning, are there things that the Lord has been telling you to do? You have decided to share those ones, and in fact you have already come up with another plan, and you are very busy working on the current plan, but that one he told you to do, you have decided that one, I am, doing, I am not doing it. The Holy Spirit tells you, he said, yes I will, but at my own timing. Something is not right. That, according to the word of God, is sin. 
And what procrastination does, it destroys our potential. It wastes our time. It misuses our time, misuses and makes us lose golden opportunities. Because opportunities have got expiry dates. You know, maybe you are procrastinating, sorting issues out with somebody who has wronged you. The Holy Spirit has already told you. Can you imagine, I want you to fast forward your life. Imagine if you had, you woke up one of these days and you, you were told, so and so is no longer there. Maybe sorting out issues with your parents, you would live with regret for the rest of your life. What are some of the good things? You know they are good for sure, according to God's standard. But you have procrastinated and thought and said, I will do it at my own time. Did you know you have no time of your own? Enough for the day is the trouble. Recognize that you need God to see tomorrow. Do not presume you already have it. Yours is today. Let it counts. Whenever you wake up and it is today, you are saying about today, let that day count. Tomorrow may never be yours. Because, I repeat again, we are always a breath away from eternity. Do what you can do today because procrastination is a sin. A sin of doing nothing. Sin is not just by doing, it is evil. Sin is doing evil things, true? Not doing what is right is evil. That's what we have just read. In any case, actually it's so bad. Proverbs 13, verse 12 in New Living Translation. Is it NIV or New Living? But this is what it says. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. Hope deferred. Procrastination is defiling what you can do now, yet you are only sure of today. Maybe you have deferred, reconciling, forgiving, getting saved, getting involved in a certain ministry, reaching out to somebody who needs help. You have procrastinated, yet you know it is within your powers. You have witnessed witnessing about eternity to your friend. Can you imagine your friend if you heard today that they are no longer living and you never told them about the Lord Jesus Christ? Procrastination in some issues is a matter of life and death. How I pray that when the Lord puts it in you to do it, do it the soonest. Because that time you are sure God is involved. Remember I said, those plants, like those balloons for my birthday, which had that gas, I was even shown, I was told, I don't know if they're in tubes like these, my sizes, I'm usually very inquisitive. So I wanted to know why, how come these balloons are not coming down and we have not tied them to the wall they have only have ribbons which they are hanging and they are there. I wanted to know why. We want our plants to hang there and keep us afloat because our plants will make us. Do you believe it? Yes. So there are three mistakes we have agreed we are going to avoid. And we have no, if we have already there, we can, that's where you are hearing this morning so that you can edit early enough. Pray as you plan. Stop presuming that tomorrow is yours and stop procrastinating. You can only be able to do this. There are some things, those are studying orders. You know when you have put a studying order in a bank, whether your account has money or not, they still, they, they, it is scheduled in such a way that actually you will be penalized in case they want that money because you had placed a studying order and there is no money because it is a studying order. So some of these things, they are studying order. For example, prayer and reading God's word. We can't sit there and negotiate. That is what keeps us afloat, is as you pray, as you read God's word, that you get wisdom for living. 
So prayer and Bible reading, they connect you with God and eliminate ungodly elements in your plans. And of course, as you witness, witness is telling your world where God has put you, your world, that I am this because I met one, Jesus Christ, who changed my life and he can change it. I want to challenge you that you keep witnessing about what Jesus has done. In 2021, I pray that in your plan, you, as you plan to go up country, you will say, you will find opportunities and seize them and tell the people around you about the saving grace. Witnessing, you are telling somebody, choose between heaven and hell. And like I know majority of us, we believe in heaven. I want to tell you this morning, hell is also real. And you need to tell people there is a way out. They don't have to go to hell. So as you witness, God is so happy. The Bible says that heaven rejoices, angels rejoice when one soul receives the Lord. I can tell you if heaven is rejoicing, they will pour some of the joy down to you. One of the ways be part of it, witness about the saving grace. And of course, serving the Lord. Because serving is a sign of gratitude and desire to grow. You know, one observation I've made, amongst the many miracles Jesus did, for example, the Samaritan woman, he would tell them, go and do something. It's like you receive the, the salvation, then you are given an assignment. You are here listening to me. You received the salvation. There is an assignment for you. That one all of us qualify. Tell somebody else. Go serve others. Go tell them that he is risen and he's the soon coming king. Therefore, this morning, I want you to look back at the plans you have for 2021 and ask yourself, did I pray? Did I involve God? And then ask yourself again, how much am I depending on God about tomorrow? Or I'm so arrogant. You know, you are proudly talking about tomorrow as if you hold it. This morning, I have got news for you from the word of God that you are only assured of today. And even today, it's not the whole day. You are assured of now when you are alive. Make use of it. What you can do now, do it and the Lord and your plans will be sustained. Are you listening to me this morning? You have heard so many times about the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and you are a, a victim. You can be charged of the last mistake, the mistake of procrastination. You have procrastinated for so long, inviting Jesus Christ as a personal savior in your life. Are you there and you are listening to me? I have got good news for you. Today can be your day. We are talking about plans. But now what plans? And Jesus is the centerpiece that holds plans together. Shall we close our eyes? You're there. You have been procrastinating. Doing the things that you know they are right. You have kept on saying tomorrow. Did you know, you have kept saying one day. Did you know that one day can mean no day? That you do it at such and such a time. One day can be never. One of these days can easily become none of these days. And this morning as we are shared from the word of God, I'm trying to encourage you to stop aiming and I'm encouraging you, leading you to pull the trigger and do it. Because delayed obedience is disobedience and there is no guarantee about tomorrow. So are you there? You have listened to me. And as I was sharing, as I was, we were reading the word of God, there are those things the Holy Spirit was reminding you that this one is within your power, you can do it 
even today, but you have kept on pushing them to tomorrow, tomorrow, someday, and I've just told you to someday can very easily become none of these days. Are you there? And you do want us to believe God that as we start off on in 2021, God giving you the grace because he will, he desires to do good. There are some actions you would want to take because it is within your power. Are you there? And you want us to pray together. If you lift up your hand, we are going to pray together. Are you there? Thank you for those hands. Father, in Jesus' name, we lift up our hands to you because you are the only one who can help us to release the trigger, to do it, and you have been waiting. Thank you for giving us today so that we can do it. I want to pray for my brothers and my sisters who are lifting up their hands and they are saying, here I am, I am sorry, and here I am, help me to do it because you want me to do it. I pray the Lord, because we are in your house, you would release such grace that will cause them to do that which you have already told them to do. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Could you be listening to me? You have been procrastinating giving your life to Jesus. You have been wanting to give your life to Jesus. You have been wanting, saying, I will do it next year, I will do it next Sunday. You don't know Jesus as your personal savior. And you'd want us to pray together for you to receive Jesus Christ. Are you there? If you are, you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior and you would want to receive him today, I want you to lift up your hand and we are going to pray for you. Are you there? Father, we thank you because your word is a seed. There could be someone who has listened, dear father, the seed has been planted and they have not had the breakthrough or the enemy has held them captive they have not yet yet said yes to your saving grace i pray that lord that word that has been planted in their spirits will grow and they are going to surrender their lives to you because in your hands they are safest i pray for them dear father i pray that none of them dear father will live this life without receiving you jesus christ the hope of eternity. I bless your people this morning. Thank you that they came to your house. And I pray, because it's not just coming to your house, they have heard your word. I pray that they will connect with eternity by obeying the word this morning. Thank you for hearing us. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.